If you're considering the Celestron Skymaster 20 by 80 binoculars, or you have just got a pair, chances are you're going to want to know what you'll be able to see with them. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of my favourite celestial objects that I like to observe with them, what I've been able to see. I'm also going to be sharing some tips and suggestions along the way. So if you're new to the channel, do hit subscribe uh, and the like button at any point if you're enjoying this content. Any questions, comments, feedback or anything on these particular binoculars, be sure to drop them down below and I'll get back to you. Now, number one, the first thing that I love to observe with these binoculars is the moon. What else? So the Skymaster 20 by 80s are brilliant for seeing a lot of the moon's prominent features and detail. So with these binoculars, you'll see much more than if you're using a kind of a lower spec pair, such as say the 15 by 70s, or even uh, lower, say it's such as the 12 by 60s. Uh, there are other Celestron Skymaster models. Now that's because of that spec there. So the 80 millimeter, you know, having a larger objective lens, you basically can acquire more light. So the moon is absolutely fantastic for looking at prominent features. I love to look at cra the craters and the mountains. You can really see them pop with these binoculars. Uh, and it makes just lunar observing an absolute joy. Uh, however, you may need to consider being aware of some kind of chromatic aberration that might affect some of the sharpness. So just bear that in mind with these binoculars. At number two, we have Saturn. So with these binoculars, you can tell that Saturn has rings, which is obviously fantastic. Um, it's an already awe-inspiring sight. Um, you can also spot the largest moon of Saturn, Titan, which is absolutely brilliant. It's a surreal experience. Uh, to see another planet's rings with just a pair of binoculars. I was very impressed. Uh, I've got a couple of telescopes myself, but with the binoculars, uh, it's great to be able to see them. Next we have, at number three, we have Venus. Now this is a great target, perhaps one of my favorites. Uh, you, can, you can see its phases, which is brilliant, uh, just like the moon's phases, uh, giving a unique perspective on how celestial bodies change over time. At number four, we have Jupiter, so another planet in our solar system. So with the Skymaster 20 by 80s, uh, you can easily see Jupiter's moons and also the equatorial cloud belt, which is really interesting as well. So uh, it's fascinating to watch these moons uh, shift positions. So that's something that I would recommend that you try and observe. Number five, we have star clusters and nebula. So let's venture beyond our solar system. These binoculars excel at viewing open star clusters. So some of my favourites are Pleiades and the Double Cluster. The Orion Nebula, also known as M42, is visible with these. Uh, and so is the Lagoon Nebula, also known as M8. Uh, th these, uh, these binoculars are great for all of those, uh, particularly under dark skies, uh, offering kind of a glimpse into the birthplaces of stars. That's number six, and I can't do that because I've got the camera in one hand, but you can imagine that plus one <laughs> is globular clusters. So these are another treat. Um, they appear a little grainy, uh, but they uh, contrast with the pinpoint stars, making them easily identifiable. So that's, you know, where these binoculars come into their own. Um, and it's like looking at a, a glittering ball of stars. Imagine that as an image uh, of what you can expect from glo globular clusters. At number seven, we have galaxies. Now for galaxy enthusiasts, M31, or also known as the Andromeda Galaxy, is uh, and the M33 are within reach. So under dark skies you'll see both of them. In terms of M31 I've been able to observe the dust lanes uh, and also for the M33 you should be able to detect the spiral arms. A little bit subtle but they are very rewarding nonetheless. At number eight we have double stars like Mizar, I've also seen Alcor and Alberio. Um, these are all fantastic to, uh, to, to view through, the, through these binoculars. Um, so yeah, just some of my favourites and ones I would suggest that you try and give a go if you do have a pair or you proceed to get some. Uh, so I just want to finish off this video. So there's eight things that you can go out and, and pursue uh, and see with these binoculars, but I do just want to give you some additional tips, some things that I've learned while using these along the way. So the first is you need to understand that these have a uh, particular field of view. So I believe it's around 3.9 degrees. Now that's really, really important because uh, it's actually, you actually get quite a narrow window of the sky. So because of the magnification at 20 times, uh, you're not going to be able to pan. Um, you, you kind of, you are quite uh, zoomed in if you like, and you won't be able to pan the sky l like you would with a, perhaps a, a pair with a less magnification uh, or, or a, a larger field of view. Bear that in mind. 
Um, so it can make identifying celestial objects a little bit challenging, particularly in the beginning and particularly for beginners. So just do bear that in mind. Um, next, I would suggest doing what I've done here, the eye cups. So I would adjust these for your comfort. So um, by default, these will arrive with the eye cups out like this, which does help if you're kind of a, a glasses wearer. I'm just going to, well, it's actually quite hard to do one hand, but that's what we were looking for. I would recommend kind of pushing them back um, rather than having them extended. I feel like it really improves my comfort and what, and it does actually help widen the field of view as well, which is obviously important considering it's the, the not the best field of view to begin with. Um, it also has helped kind of prevent those marks you get on your eyes, which can look a, bit, a little bit silly, particularly if using for a, a period of time. But remember, everyone's different, so you may find that they're better out, as I say, just for something to give a try. It only takes a couple of seconds to adjust, so it's worth a shot. Now, lastly, the weight. Now, as you can see, I've got mine mounted on a tripod, and I strongly recommend that you do proceed to get a tripod. I'll leave a link in the description below of the tripod I've actually got, um, but I would recommend them. They are heavy, so these are around, I think it's two, two kilograms, which, you know, that doesn't sound like much, but if you're pointing these overhead, uh, for any extended period of time you will get tired and I've actually found it's not my arms that get tired it's my neck so I would recommend getting a tripod as you can see really easy to attach they come with this central bar so you just screw it on to this particular point of the mount um, and that they're attached and you can kind of use these different levers to manipulate where you where you shoot uh, and you can also extend this the height accordingly which is why this tripod so good it's also very affordable but anyway it's very solid and stable but my point is i would recommend for extended viewing getting a tripod putting them on you could, some people get away without a tripod but in my experience if you want to spend some good amount of time stargazing then a tripod's a must or you could as you can see here you could this is probably too high but yeah this is definitely too high for me maybe this one it would be better but you could always rest your arms uh, on a fence as well just you or, or, or you could lie down or or be in a in a reclining chair uh, you want to support the weight essentially. So ultimately these are the Celestra and Skymaster 20 by 80 There's eight different things I absolutely love to observe, but there's far more of course, um, especially if you delve deeper. When I, when I say eight, I've mentioned, you know, number seven was galaxies, but there's so many different galaxies you can observe. Um, they are just such a good pair of astronomy binoculars, some of the best you can get, some of the most powerful, um, and they do rival uh, some of the lower specification telescopes as well, uh, particularly those in the kind of beginner price point and range. Uh, of course, as you go up the price point and the, the quality of uh, uh, telescopes, these binoculars aren't going to compare, but you do get the benefit of, you know, you don't have to set anything up, you can pack these away, you can take these with you on the go. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit the like button. Do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And as I said at the start of the video, do consider dropping any questions, comments, uh, thoughts, feedback uh, for me down below and I'll get back to you. With all that said, I hope you have an excellent day.